What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. In today's lesson, we're going to learn the second meaning of seven very common verbs, such as to use, to put, or to go. In this way, we're going to expand our vocabulary without effort. Are you ready? If so, let's get going. So the first super common verb on my list today is to use and more specifically could use something. We need to use the modal verb could, could use something. So in this case, it means that I need something or I would like something now, something would help me or benefit me. And now let's look at some examples. For example, I could use a hot bath. It would help me relax. The second example, I could use a trip abroad. I haven't been abroad for going on three years and I feel like going somewhere outside of Spain. And one more example, I could use a laptop. So it's like, I need it. And now let's move on to the second verb, to put it. In this case, to put, means to say. For example, that's one way of putting it. The second expression with the verb to put it, it's a nice way to put it. It means that something is well expressed or you've said something positive about someone or something in a nice way. Two more expressions. How should I put it? Or how shall I put it? Or let me put it to you this way. To you is optional. You can use these expressions when you're going to say something honest, but it may sound a bit rude. Two examples, the first one, how should I put it? The situation is unsustainable. And one more example, let me put it to you this way. Please don't meddle in my affairs. To meddle in something means to interfere in something that is not your business or concern. I've got more expressions with to put it, to put it politely. You can use it when you're not criticizing something as much as you could. For example, to put it politely, he's not a professional. I've got three more expressions. I really like the next one, to put it mildly. It means that the situation is much worse then it's being said. For example, to put it mildly, Will Smith didn't like the joke. He hated the joke. Two more to go, let me put it out there. You can use this expression when you want to propose something for discussion, often something uncomfortable. Let me put it out there. Unless we bring this senseless war to an end, irreparable damage will be done. And the last expression in this group let me put it another way. You can use it when you're going to explain something in a different way in order to make it easier to understand. And now let's move on to our third verb, to frame it. In this case, it also means to say, but it's more to express something by choosing your words carefully or in a particular way. Two examples. The first one, it's a way to frame it. And one more example, the politician didn't answer the question, so the journalist framed it in a different way. So it's like he expressed the same idea in a different way. Number four, the verb to go. It can also mean to say. It's used in spoken English and you usually use it in the present tense, although you refer to things that happened in the past. You can also use it in the past tense. For example, I go, I spoke my mind and she goes, no way. So instead of saying I went, she went, we can use the present simple to talk about the past. And when, for example, she went, I'm really sorry. And I went, it's too late to apologize. And guys, before we continue, just a super quick reminder. If you like today's lesson, 
please don't forget to like it. And if you haven't subscribed to English Bits, please make sure you do so. Thank you. Number five, I see. Today I have difficulty seeing because I've got a sty once again. So to see, it can also mean understand. For example, I see, I understand. Another example, I don't see why some people cause so much destruction and suffering. And one more expression that can come in handy for your speaking exam, especially when you have to interact with a partner, you can say, I can see where you're coming from, which means I understand your point of view and I understand what you mean. Tomorrow to go, number six, the verb to speak. And the expression would be something doesn't speak to me. And we can also add really, something doesn't really speak to me. Or we can make it positive and say something really speaks to me. So we use the first expression, something doesn't really speak to me, when we don't like something. For example, this outfit doesn't really speak to me. And on the contrary, something really speaks to me means that we like something and something has a special meaning to us. And especially when we talk about a painting, a song or a movie. For example, this song really speaks to me. And last but not least, if you will. In this case, will is not an auxiliary. You can use this expression when you say something, but you're not sure that it's the right expression to say or to use in this case. Or maybe you express something in a different, original and uncommon way. I think it can be especially useful for your speaking exam when you say something, but you're not sure. So you can say your sentence and at the end you can add if you will. It's a synonym of so to speak or in the manner of speaking. Two examples. The first one, she always looks on the bright side. She is a vitamin person, if you will. And the last example for today, your breath is your anchor, if you will. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching this short and I hope useful lesson. And please let me know in the comments down below if there was a meaning that you didn't know of. And of course, if you learned something new, please don't forget to give this lesson a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to English Bits, and remember that you can catch me on Instagram, where I teach English on a daily basis. Thank you for joining me today, have a nice Sunday, and see you next Wednesday with a shirt, and as usual, See you next Sunday. Have a lovely day. Ciao for now.